Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that talks about the design goals and high level structure of MLIR or multi-level intermediate representation, which as the name implies is a compiler IR along with a set of compiler infrastructure for optimization and code generation to go along with it. One of the main architects of this is Chris Latner, who was also one of the principals behind LLVM. Now, full disclosure, a lot of the authors on this paper are from Google. I work for Google too, but I have no relation to this project. Compiler writers love creating new intermediate representations because it's the way they solve problems. It's the hammer to all the code optimization nails that they see. And so you might ask, well, why do we need one more IR? You have things like the JVM, you have very mature infrastructure like LLVM. So why one more? And the main reason is that there are many problems we find that are better modeled at a different level of abstraction than existing infrastructure like the JVM or the LLVM tool chain allow. We see that many compiler developers make their own IR to solve domain specific problems such as language or library specific optimizations or some kind of flow sensitive type checking that is very domain specific. And one of the domains that the authors were motivated by was machine learning where they saw that machine learning frameworks used many different compilers and runtime systems. And this just led to a very fractured landscape when it came to runtime systems, compiler tool chains, and just getting your ML app running end to end. And while tool chains like LLVM have found a lot of success in integrating different languages that all compile down to LLVM, we still see modern compiler writers build their own high level IR before they reach the low level abstractions of LLVM. That really is the key problem that MLIR is trying to solve, hence the term multi-level in its name. You could almost think of it as a meta framework or a set of meta tools that allow you to define your very own custom intermediate representation and then some tools and languages and infrastructure to go along with it that also allow you to define your own custom transformations on that IR for optimizations or rewriting or code generation. So before we look at some of the design considerations, let's look at a small concrete example to look at some of the central constructs in MLIR. One of the most central constructs is an operation or an op. An op is the central unit of semantics in MLIR. Most other things, things like instructions or functions or modules are modeled as ops. Now the cool thing is that MLIR allows and in fact encourages users to define their own custom ops. And most compiler passes will treat custom ops that they don't yet understand very conservatively. Not surprisingly, ops can have arguments or operands as well as results. And they can also be recursively nested. So ops contain a list of regions and regions inside them contain lists of blocks. And these blocks can be thought of as basic blocks in the sense of control flow graphs. But then blocks themselves can contain further ops and this allows you to form nested structures. And you can group together logical sets of custom ops into a namespace called a dialect. So you can define various dialects of MLIR that are custom suited to your particular language or the particular domain you're looking at. The same thing holds for types. Every value in MLIR has a type. And while there are a few basic built-in types, you can also user-define types. One of the cool things this allows you to do is define some optimizations in a very declarative manner. 
Now, there might be some complex global optimizations that require you to do deep manipulations on the control flow graph, but then there are many others which can be expressed almost like local rewrite rules. An example is over here, which transforms a ReLU operation, a, a very frequently used construct in machine learning, into a compare float. And this purely looks at patterns within the control flow graph and then rewrites certain ops in terms of certain other ops. And this reduces something that would have been a very complex piece of code down to a simpler declarative configuration. And as for the type of IR used at the lowest level, MLIR, just like LLVM, uses a form of SSA or static single assignment. I've done another video on this channel that looks into how SSA works. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, MLIR is pretty new infrastructure and one of the main domains where it is currently being used is machine learning and especially for TensorFlow graphs. The way TensorFlow's internal model works is a very good fit for MLIR because it is based on a data flow graph and it has very dynamic execution semantics. If you express your TensorFlow logic as MLIR, you can then treat optimization and retargeting as a compiler problem, essentially. You can do not only simple algebraic optimizations, but you could also retarget graphs, entire machine learning workflows for parallel execution on data centers or clusters of hardware accelerators like the tensor processing units that Google has. And all this can be modeled in one uniform and consistent intermediate representation instead of a disparate collection of many different runtimes and compiler stacks. So that was a quick look at multi-level IR, a new compiler intermediate representation and infrastructure, which is getting a lot of traction in the machine learning space these days. I hope you enjoyed that. Check out the couple of other related videos, which will serve as good background to this one. There's one on LLVM and there's another one on SSA. And I'll link those down in the description below. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much.